why is inflation harmful? This may seem like uh, an unnecessary question because everybody thinks they know why inflation is harmful. If the prices of goods and services go up, then it means that each person is able to afford less. You know, it erodes your purchasing power, and so it's bad for everybody. But that can't be the reason. If inflation is really not about the rising prices of flour and sugar, but instead is really about the falling value of money, then it must be true that everything that you exchange money for should be rising in price equally. Not exactly equally, but correspondingly. If money is losing value, then anything that you are selling or buying should require more money. Not only flour and sugar, but a US dollar. It should show up in the exchange rate as well. And labor services. If money is losing value, then if you look at the long run, it should be the case that wages and salaries expressed in terms of money are rising at at least the same rate at which the prices of goods and services are rising. If inflation really is the falling value of money, then it can't be eroding the purchasing power of wages and salaries because wages and salaries should be rising commensurately. Now, this is, this is an astonishing speculation because everybody thinks inflation erodes wages and salaries. So this is almost a test of the claim that inflation really is just money falling in value. So let's have a quick look. Here is the rise in the cost of groceries in the United Kingdom over a 20 year span. Let's compare that to the rise in the average pay over the same period. Turns out that average nominal pay increased by more than the cost of groceries. I picked the United Kingdom arbitrarily. So let's pick another country equally arbitrarily, Mexico. We see the same thing. Nearly every country you pick, you're going to see that over the long run, not necessarily from every year to the next, but over the long run, you're going to see that the increase in nominal wages and salaries is not going to be much different from the increase in the prices of goods and services. And that is because it is money that is losing value. And that's going to show up against everything you exchange money for. So the problem with inflation is not that it is eroding the purchasing power of wages and salaries. So then why is inflation a problem? Why do we care if countries have high inflation? There's a, there's a more insidious problem with inflation. Inflation is harmful because it leads to resource misallocation. It makes an economy use its resources inefficiently. Prices perform a critical function in a market economy. Price signals are 
the transmission mechanism for information. When resources become more scarce, and therefore the products that use those resources are going to become more scarce, prices rise to signal businesses and end consumers to economize on those goods and services because their prices cost more. We don't need to know that a resource has become scarce. We just need to go to the supermarket and see that things are costing more, things that use that resource intensively. So prices are the signaling mechanism that makes people use resources efficiently. The problem with inflation is that it makes those comparisons difficult. When you go into the supermarket and you notice, oh, well, the bag of flour is now costing more. If you are in an inflationary economy, if you're in an economy that is generally experiencing high inflation, you don't ask the following questions. You don't say, is it only flour that has gone up in price? And maybe cornmeal has not. You don't say, this is not my usual supermarket. Maybe this supermarket is more expensive. You're not able to say that definitively because you're in a climate of general inflation and prices go up all the time. So you're more likely to say, oh, it's just inflation. I may as well pick up this bag of flour anyway. It interferes with the price signal. If you, if you can't make those comparisons or if those comparisons are costly to you, you have to put on the bag of flour and travel to your regular supermarket to see if the price has also gone up there. You know, most times you don't bother. And so consumers make inefficient choices and businesses too. Your regular supplier, the contract for the supplier has to be renewed and he sends over terms that are, are more costly than what was in the old contract. Does the business carry out a new procurement exercise to look at what all suppliers can, can provide the, the, the input for? Or does the business say, you know, it's not surprising that this contract is going to cost us more than the last one because all prices are going up. And so the idea of making relative cost comparisons becomes more difficult. Inflation interferes with the ability to make price comparisons and therefore leads to resource misallocation. And that resource misallocation means that the total amount that the economy can produce out of its given resources is going to be less than otherwise. It makes the country poorer. There are other reasons why it makes the country poorer. You have to, you have to try to minimize holding money. If money is losing value, then you don't hold on to money for very long. So we looked at the case of hyperinflation in Venezuela, where prices end up, ended up doubling every couple of days. It might be a better use of your time for you to go supermarket shopping, to go grocery shopping once a week. But you can't do that if inflation is too high. You're going to go every day. And this is true of businesses as well, that having working capital, having some liquidity is important to running the business efficiently. But then the business operators have to think not only what is the most efficient way to bring in inputs and turn it into our product, how can we minimize on holding cash balances? So there's a cost, there's an effort to minimizing the holding of money, given the convenience of money. These are called shoe leather costs. You know, getting on the idea that you sort of wear out your shoes trying to minimize holding money. You know, going to the bank more frequently, going shopping more frequently. And in some cases, it takes some effort. There's another cost as well to frequently changing prices that we call menu costs. 
it's actually the cost of changing prices. The term comes from the fact that, you know, when, when prices change in a restaurant, they have to literally reprint a new menu. So it's the cost of printing the menu. And that metaphor is used to represent just the cost of changing any prices. If it's, you know, the labor cost to go and change a price board. Or um, not even a literal cost in that sense, but the disruption to the customer relationship. Customers don't like when prices change. And many business, businesses experience at least a temporary fall off in, in, their, in their sales when there's a discrete jump in price, even if it's a part of general inflation. And even if sales come back after a while. So there's a loss from the price change. Those are menu costs. The last problem from having inflation is that low inflation tends to be predictable and high inflation, countries that have higher inflation tend to have more variability in the inflation rate from year to year. High inflation is more volatile and not knowing what the inflation rate is going to be can create arbitrary outcomes rather than predictable outcomes in business relationships. So for example, if, if you and I are expecting inflation to be 5% and we sign a loan contract, and in the loan contract, we agree on a 7% nominal rate of interest. So I borrow some money from you, and at the end of the term of the loan, I'm going to pay you back the principal plus 7%. 5% only compensates you for inflation, for the loss of the purchasing, purchasing power on the principal that you lent me. The extra 2% is your real reward for doing without that liquidity for a year. But uh, in, a, in a high inflationary economy, that inflation rate could unexpectedly turn out to be 10%. In which case, when I repay you the principal plus, 10, plus 7 percent additional for the nominal rate of interest, you're actually getting back less in purchasing power, 10 percent less than you loan me. You're worse off. Because I'm paying you back less purchasing power than I borrowed, I'm better off. So we have had an arbitrary redistribution of wealth from the lender to the borrower. And any contract for payment, which is denominated in nominal terms, is going to be subject to this arbitrary redistribution. So anybody who's on a fixed income, if you're on a fixed pension and inflation is unexpectedly high, then the pensioner loses out and the organization paying the pension gets a benefit. So these sort of contractual arrangements that are, that are denominated in nominal terms are subject to an arbitrary redistribution of who benefits and who loses because of unexpected inflation and that comes with high inflation. In which case, the uncertainty creates an unwillingness to get into such contracts. So the problem with inflation is not that it generally erodes the purchasing power of wages and salaries. Over the long term, it doesn't. Problem with inflation is resource misallocation, shoe leather costs, menu costs, and arbitrary redistributions. Inflation does not generally reduce the purchasing power of average wages, but it makes the economy less efficient 